Now, one of the biggest reasons that this is such a huge issue is because it's not just on one player. It's not on one particular position group. It's not even just on one coach. It's something that everybody contributes to in a negative way. And it hurts the team so bad every single time and it just sets them back. And the problem that I'm talking about is Don't get mad. Uh -huh. It's just what it is. It's what it is. Yeah, we talking sports shot out in Graven Vance. Yeah, this feels like a dream. You too, team, keep it clean. <laughs> you know I gotta mess with y'all sometimes now. Uh, but what's going on? It's St. Graven here with another video. And in this video, ooh, we got to have this conversation. We had it sometimes throughout last year, but we got to think about the future and hope that we don't keep having to have this conversation over and over and over. Anyway, before we get into this video, shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Uh, I appreciate y'all. Um, thank you all for showing extra support and really just the whole team keep it clean as a whole. Uh, I love y'all. Thank you for being so positive. And again, thank you for uh, just being good to each other, being good to each other and being good to other people because that's far more important than any football game, any football team, any idea that I or you may have about whatever football team, whatever things going on in the NFL. It's much more important to try and be good people uh, to other people. So again, keep let, let somebody know that you love them. Uh, let somebody know that you're thinking about them. And let somebody know that they're special to you. Because it, it can make somebody's day. And it could take somebody from here to here. And that's what we want to do. We want to uplift people. We don't want to tear people down. We don't want to do that. Because there's already enough people out there trying to tear people down. We want to uplift, man. So y'all stay up, stay positive, and keep being good, man. Anyway, in today's video, we had got a comment uh, from my guy, uh, Ron. Ron E. That's what we're going to call him, Ron E. Uh, and he said, hey, if you read this comment, I would like to know why no one is talking about the biggest issue that I've seen with the Ravens. And, ooh, well, it depends on what you feel that biggest issue is. Now, some people say the biggest issue is the wide receiver. Oh, man, the Ravens still need another wide receiver. Sammy Watkins is just not enough. They need to add more, and they need to add somebody very, very special. Now, something interesting that I saw uh, when it comes to the offensive line, because a lot of people think when you talk about wide receiver, then you're neglecting offensive line, and you don't really care about the offensive line because you only care about wide receiver. But actually, with a wide receiver, it can actually help. Because the offensive line may not have to block as much because that wide receiver would be getting open. Anyway, so some people say wide receiver is the biggest problem. Some people say offensive line is the biggest problem. Lamar needs protection at MVP season. He had a great offensive line. He did his thing. And that was the biggest change from 2019 to 2020. The loss of Marshall Yond, of course, injuries to Ronnie Stanley, just a makeshift offensive line literally the entire season. Was that the biggest issue? Hey, well, we'll see what Ron E. had to say. But then some other people may be like, hey, no, the biggest issue is the offensive play calling. This offensive play calling, it needs work. It needs fixing. It needs adjusting. It needs better. And you can make your case for either one of the three. And you may have something else that you may want to add or something else that you may feel is really the biggest issue for the Baltimore Ravens. But Ron E. had something else to say. Let's see what he said. He said, um, I would like to know why no one is talking about the biggest issue that I've seen with the Ravens, an issue I've seen for the past few years. So this isn't anything that he says is new. So, well, that would el probably eliminate the offensive line being an issue because the offensive line the previous two years, they have been pretty good. They have been pretty good in 2018 and 19. I mean, besides the playoff game in 2018, but Regular season under Lamar in 2018 and 19. And you know Lamar helped out a lot because of what he can do. But the offensive line overall, they were pretty good. They were a little overrated 2019, but they were still good. They were better than 2020. But anyway, but that would eliminate, eliminate the offensive line being the biggest issue. Now, wide receiver, that's something that we talk about every single year. So maybe he's talking about that. Offensive play calling is something that we talk about pretty much every single year. So could he be talking about that? Well, maybe 2019. It was the, the, the play call, and we expected it to just grow and get better. And then in the playoffs, we expected them to do what got them there in the first place. So maybe he is talking about the play call, and let's see. And he said, okay, um, 
this issue has bit the Ravens in the butt time and time again. Oh, okay. Okay, so an issue that the Ravens have had bites in their butt. Now, that's very uncomfortable. That makes a good situation a bad one. Because think about think about if you're having dinner. You're having a nice grilled something. Or you're having a nice baked something. Or if you're a vegetarian, you're having a, a vegan meal. And it's just going really good. You're having a nice drink with it. You're at a nice setting. And it's a beautiful thing. And you over there talking with whoever you're having dinner with, then all of a sudden, ah, you get a bite in the butt. That just sets everything back. It makes a good situation turn bad like that. And it makes things uncomfortable. It just, it can ruin stuff. But anyway, that's the feeling. So, penalties in big time moments. That's the problem. That's it. He said, how many games would look totally different had the lack of discipline or, if I dare say, penalty call bias didn't occur? So, oof, this is a great, great point. The penalties. Penalties. We know and we have seen, especially throughout this past season, oh my goodness, the penalties. The penalties. There would be times when the Ravens offense would be moving. They'd be clicking. They'd be shaking. They'd be baking. And they would be moving and grooving and wheeling and dealing down uh, that defense. And all of a sudden, boom. Hold up. <whistles> False start on the offense. Oh, but that wasn't even the kicker. Oh, Ravens would also be moving and grooving and wheeling and dealing against whatever defense. And then, boom, they would get a big play. And then ref would say, illegal formation, illegal shift. You thought you had a big play, Ravens? Nah. Bring it back. Bring it back. And they would be like, oh, my goodness. Why? Why? And then things got so bad. And I don't know, I, I, I can only speak for myself, but I'm sure a lot of y'all went through the same exact thing. There will be some times when the offense play during the game, it may be kind of shaky, it may be kind of up and down, and they will be struggling, and they may get a big play. But after they got that big play, you were just like, oh. I just, I'm not even going to get excited because I know there's going to be a penalty that's attached to this play. Tell, please tell me in the comment section if you went through that same, because I know I'm not the only one. I, I, I guarantee that I'm not the only one that that happened to. We be watching the games and we be watching the Ravens offense like, whoa, what's happening, dude? What's going on, man? They be struggling. And when they got positive, we couldn't even be positive about it because we just felt like there would be some negative yellow that came along with it. And, and that was tough. And it, it has just, it messed up the Ravens so many times this year. Because Raven, it just, it set them back. It ruined the moment. It killed the vibe. And it does it so quick. Now, I know that there are going to be bad penalties. There, and, and he did talk about penalty bias. And one of the things that he was talking about with that, or that I assume he is talking about, because he didn't actually say it, but I assume that he may be talking about the, uh, the lack of defensive pass interference. I think the Ravens didn't get a defensive pass interference call till, ooh, I want to say the Cowboys game, maybe. Or it may, it may have been like around that time. They didn't get defense, a defensive pass interference call for the longest or maybe it was in the Steelers game. Because I know, I think Eric Tomlinson, I think, oh, no, it wasn't Eric Tomlinson at that time. It was the other tight end. Um, who I, I forget his name. I got to mix up with Eric Tomlinson. But anyway, the, I think the guy that dropped the, uh, that dropped the touchdown. Whatever. But Ravens, they, they weren't getting no defensive pass interference calls called in their favor. And there was times when their, I mean, their wide receivers were being interfered with prior to the pass getting there. Like, they, it would happen. But they wouldn't get a call. And they'd just be like, oh. And, and it got, it, it didn't really occur to me that it was an alarming thing until somebody actually pointed out the stats and pointed out that the, how low the, the Ravens were last in uh, pass interference is called for them. Like defensive pass interference is called on defenses that are going against the Ravens offense. So that just, it was just like, wow. That's a big yikes. And it, was, and it wasn't like, oh, because I know some people would be like, well, Ravens receivers, they weren't striking any fear in anybody, so nobody had to interfere. 
don't know how you can use that, but if you actually see the games, there were times when they would be getting interfered with. And there would be some defensive holding sometimes too. Just you know, refs would be like, "Oh, Ravens offense." There is uh, no, you know, don't call it. Don't worry about it. But against the Ravens, oh boy, that was another thing. And again, he talked about penalty bias against the Ravens. There would be some terrible calls, man. Te terrible calls, terrible. And they would be like, "What? Really? That's what you're calling?" Oh, it would be one of the most frustrating things in the world. It would be so frustrating. Because it would be like, oh, you're not going to call that for the Ravens, but you're going to call that against them? Oh, my. And y'all know me. I'm not one to whine over penalties or anything like that. But when it's bad, oh, it's bad. And we're going to talk about it. We got to talk about it. Now, uh, one of the worst that we saw, it occurred in one of the biggest stages for the Baltimore Ravens this past year. And we, we saw some wishy-washy stuff throughout the entire season, but one of the worst, we'll never forget it, Titans playoff game. Ryan Tannehill throws it up. A.J. Brown, who's a nice receiver. You got to get He's a nice receiver. But he pushes Marlon Humphrey. Literally pushed him. Pushed him. Wasn't like nonchalant about it. It wasn't subtle. It wasn't low. No, he pushed Marlon Humphrey. Push Marlon Humphrey down, and oh, touchdown. So we're, we're all in the live stream together. We're looking. We, we're waiting for that penalty to come out because we know it's coming. Oh, it's an obvious one. It's so obvious. We know what's coming, and we're waiting. We're waiting. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, why are these guys lining up for the field goal? We know a penalty is coming. It's offensive pass interference. We know it's on the way. What are these dudes doing lining up for the extra point? So we're still waiting. Waiting, and we watched the Titans kick the extra point with no penalty, no flag. And I was like, wow, this is, this is real. They, they're really not calling this, and they didn't. And I was just like, oh, okay. Well then. And I, I was just thinking in my mind, um, I did still feel like the Ravens were going to win. But I still had that thought in my mind, and I'm sure maybe some of y'all may have had it too. But I was thinking, oh, man, the Ravens, if they lose this game and they lose it by one score, I'm going to be very, very upset because that should not have been a touchdown. It should not have been a touchdown. But thank goodness the Ravens turned it around and they fixed that. But, again, something that they didn't fix was the penalties that they caused on their own that would actually be good calls and fair calls. And, again, that's something that you can't just put on a player or a position or a coach. It's everybody. Everybody. It shows a lack of preparation. Um, it just shows a lack of execution. It's just bad on all fronts. It's bad. And... It just, it does nothing good for you. And then the Ravens just, they, they had this consistency with it. It was consistent. And it got to that point where you expected it to happen every single game. And you expected it to happen where the Ravens would get at least two offensive pre-snap penalties every single game. And Ravens fulfilled that expectation for you every single game. Every game. And I don't care how good or great your offensive line is. I don't care how good or great your receiving group is. I don't care how good or great your play calling is. I don't care how good or great your team, your coach, your front office, any of that is. If you continue to get penalties like that, it's not going to matter. Because it's going to take, continue to take away from your offense, continue to take away from yards, continue to take away from momentum, continue to take away from the biggest thing that matters at the end of these games, and that's points. So Ravens have got to nip this thing in the bud this offseason. They got to work on that this offseason. Re they really got to work on that. Because the Ravens, this, this whole thing with you calling a guy over in motion and, and he's running over at the last second, it's like three seconds left on the play clock and then he starts to run in motion, he got to run super fast because that play clock's getting ready to get to zero and then you get the, you get the snap off. 
But just the timing of the play will have already been messed up. Not saying that they can't still have a successful play, but you just want things to be run a lot smoother. And I think one of the biggest things is just the entire execution. Getting the play in on time and then execution, ex executing that play on time too. There will be far too many times when the Ravens, they, the, the, the two seconds left on the play clock. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They will be snapping the ball at the last second. The last second. And it just, they got to stop because that limits what you can do for any particular play on offense. That limits it. You want Lamar to read that whole defense? You want Lamar to see what they're doing? You got to do that stuff a lot sooner. You got to do that stuff a lot sooner. So it's, it's really important that they fix that. They got to fix that. And then, I mean, the, the, the bad snaps, I know the bad snaps are not penalties, but that's a big thing, too. It's all about adjustments. If you notice that your center and quarterback exchange is a little bit rough, okay, we, we got to implement some plays under center. Let's implement more plays under center. Let's do it. We need to do that. Let's make it happen. So Ravens just, they, they, they got to fix that moving forward for sure, man. They got to fix that. So, Ronnie, we appreciate you bringing that to our attention. It is something that we definitely uh, we, we talked about extensively on here, but it did need to be talked about just that much more. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And just like we hope those pre-snap penalties and just a lot of penalties with the Ravens, period, will be for the 2021 season, I'm out.